Okay, starting with the second part of the abdomen, we're going to cover about 60 slides as we did in the first part, and this will complete our abdomen uh, lecture. So looking at this picture here, you can see we have the left kidney and the right kidney. Coming down is the ureter into the urinary bladder. We have the aorta and the inferior vena cava. So um, I'm going to make you learn all the things coming off of the aorta and bifurcating. The IVC is not as important for me. So um, you'll learn a couple things, but not as much as you will with the aorta. So clearly this is your liver here. So looking at a sagittal, this is a CT reformatted image. We have the liver that's the anterior portion. This is the heart here. The left lung, here's your diaphragm. This is your left kidney right here. Coming down, we have the posterior abdominal wall with the renal pyramid and the major calyce and renal pelvis, small intestine. This is the stomach here. Looking at the kidney, um, we have the adrenal gland, as we talked about, that sits right up top. Uh, peritoneal fat with the renal pelvis and the ureter coming down. Here's your renal cortex on the outside with your renal pyramid and your calyce right here with your renal pelvis. This is um, a CT and we're looking at the psoas muscle with the renal calyces. Here's your spleen and your renal cortex around the outside. On arterial phase, the renal cortex gets nice and bright. So this is, of course, the left kidney, and here is your renal pyramid you can see there. Um, here's your right kidney with your liver. All right, so here's CT. This is put into a bone window format. So here's your liver. This is T12, so 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 12. We have the renal pelvis here, your calyces with your renal pyramids and your cortex as the enhanced part around the outside. This is your descending colon, a piece of it right here. This is your psoas muscle on either side. Looking at the kidney blown up again, so if we start around the top, so the fibrous capsules around the outside, you have your uh, renal papilla with your renal cortex and your columns that are here in between. These are your renal pyramids, each of these gray. Okay, so when we do arterial phase, you'll see the cortex here uh, lighting up uh, nicely, and you'll see your pyramids will still be nice and dark because they're not filtering yet. So here's your renal pelvis. You have some fat within the sinuses, and then your ureter coming down. So starting over here, this is your liver. Then you have your hilum of your kidney. This is your left kidney. This is your right kidney. You have your... Uh, perirenal fat with your spleen here and gratis fascia what we talked about you can't really see it on that one but um, here's your abdominal wall and we'll talk about those muscles later on here's your psoas muscles coming down your renal cortex with gratis fascia you can see it right there and we have the renal pelvis with your calyces and your pyramid you can see one of them lit up right there Looking at this MRI, T1, we have um, uh, gratis fascia. You can see that line right there. This is your renal hilum with your, um, what I want you to know here, your cortex around the outside. CT, uh, oral and IV contrast on this one. You can see the contrast in the large colon along with contrast in the kidney. So we have your renal hilum. This is your left ureter coming down. This is your renal pelvis and um, your calyces, and outside is your cortex. Here's your gratis fascia, and what are they saying? PF is, oh, perirenal fat, okay. So the CT, this is with oral and IV. You can see the oral contrast here in the bowel. So when we look here, we have your aorta with your IVC, and this is your right ureter. That is your left ureter. So as you can see, it's nice and bright, so we know that this is a delayed phase. And also the aorta and the IVC are isodense. This is a CT 3D uh, reconstruction. So you have your sacral ala here, your left 
and bright ureters coming down into the urinary bladder. As you can see, you can see the bladder, but you can't see um, it as dense. If you give it time, the bladder will be as dense. Right now it's mixing with the urine, so it's, it's washed out, what we call. So you have your left renal pelvis and, of course, your left kidney there. Now the stomach, when we look at the stomach, um, as you see it, the, it comes down and it depends on the body type on how it lies within the, in the abdomen. So you have your cardiac sphincter um, at your uh, esophageal, gas esophageal gastric junction and your rugae here coming down, you have your pyloric sphincter with your pyloric orifice and your duodenal bulb with your um, duodenum coming down. So looking at this one, this is your cardiac notch, that little notch right there. The upper portion of the stomach is called your fundus. Here's your body, your greater curvature, your lesser curvature, your pyloric atrium. Um, but uh, this area here is your pyloric portion, so all through here. This is your pyloric canal with your pyloric sphincter with your um, duodenum coming, coming down and around. Uh, looking here, this is the body of your stomach and your lesser omentum back in there. This is your aorta, this is your left crust, your right crust, if you're wondering where we're at. So here's your liver, great big old thing here. And these little pockets of black, this is contrast here in the stomach, little pockets of black are your rugae, so the little folds within the stomach. So this is your upper stomach, this is your fundus. Um, coming across here is your pancreas. You can see how it looks feathery. That is your pancreas. So here's a kidney. This is your left kidney. This is your spleen. This is your liver and your gallbladder right there. And this is your stomach. So this is a good MRIT1 image of the abdomen. This is CT. This, uh, looking here, this is piece of the pancreas. So this is the body of the pancreas. Here's your stomach has got air in it. So that's a clue. If when you see free air like that, that's usually your stomach. So all this is your liver and this is your spleen, so this is your lesser curvature and your greater curvature on the outside of your stomach. So looking here, pyloric atrium, um, I wouldn't have you label that, it's pretty hard to tell what that is in your pyloric sphincter with your duodenum. If you really look, you can see that that's where you're at, but it's hard to tell. So here's that air pocket within the stomach. Um, here's a kidney, uh, left kidney, right kidney, aorta, IVC, and you can see the vessels are nice and dark. Um, that's, so that's a giveaway that those are vessels on that MRI. So this is a better picture. This is air, so this is your stomach, your pyloric atrium, and your um, pyloric sphincter with your duodenum bulb right there. So this is actually your bulb of your duodenum. Looking at the colon now, so if we uh, take a look, so you see the small bowel loops, this is your jejunum, then we go into your ileum. Um, ileum is typically more on the right side and in the pelvic region. So if you're in kind of the middle um, or left side, you're gonna be in your jejunum. So coming through, we have your appendix and your cecum, coming up your ascending, you have your uh, hepatic flexure, transfer. So you see these little lines, that's your hostra. So coming up your splenic flexure, going down your descending, um, and then I want you to know your sigmoid down to your um, rectum to your anus. So looking here, this is where your ileum comes into your large bowel. So you have an ileocecal valve. There's a lot of pathologies that hide right in here. So that's why it's important that we see it. Looking here, this is your duodenum with your pyloric sphincter, and here's your stomach coming down. This is the greater curvature and your lesser curvature. This is your transverse colon. So there's a piece here and a piece here with your splenic flexure. All this right here, you can see how it looks different. The jejunum is feathery looking, so it's more fluffy than the ileum. So the ileum doesn't have this fluffy appearance. So that's one way to tell the difference on your small bowels where you're at. And then of course you have your hostra for your large bowel. So the ileum comes up and in. You can see um, your ileocecal valve right there coming into your cecum, and this is your ascending with your hepatic flexure. So the C loop coming in, here's your duodenal bulb coming around. Here's your first region, second region, and you can see right there your amplivator coming around to your third, and this is your fourth, and you have your ligament atrites coming around. So it's really important that this is in the proper location um, as we look for rotation, malrotation through there. Here's your fourth segment going into your jejunum. 
Uh, looking here, we have, um, what do I want you to know? I want you to know your aorta and your IBC. And um, here's your um, mesenteric, superior mesenteric artery and vein. Here's your heart, your jejunum. You can see how it's feathery looking, whereas the ilium is not. See how it's just plain, or this is more fluffy. So that's the difference. It's a good shot there. This is your cecum right there. This is MRI. So we have the uh, rectus abdominis muscle up top. This is your ilium coming around. This is your left kidney, right kidney, aorta, IVC. And um, linear aba is right there, right in between the two. And we've got the transverse abdominis and the um, internal oblique and external obliques right here. And this is your quadratus lumbrum, okay? So looking here at the CT, this is with oral contrast. I don't see any IV contrast. So this is loops of the ilium, and you can see up here the difference in appearance. So that is your jejunum. So ilium, and then this is your ileocecal valve. It's on the right side coming into your cecum. Right lobe of the liver, this is an MRI. So right lobe of the liver, here's the stomach, here's the jejunum, transverse colon coming across, um, ascending colon, that's a hard one to label, and here's your cecum. So your ilium, sigmoid colon, you can see how low we are. We're coming down into the sigmoid, and here's your cecum. This is a uh, really good study. This is a... Um, as MRI enterography where we give them a negative contrast to drink. So as you can see, the contrast is dark. And then we give them um, IV contrast and it highlights the lumen of the bowel. So we can see if there's any Crohn's or anything um, weird going on with the lumen. So any inflammation. So here's the liver. So that's the gallbladder. These are the hostra marks. Here's your transverse colon, your jejunum. So we can see the lumen really well. Your descending colon. Here's your ileum. And this is your ascending colon, so your cecum is down here. So it's a great, great thing to do if there's any kind of bowel inflammation. This is a CT. Um, uh, we do them in place of a colonoscopy, so virtual colonoscopy is what you probably have heard before. So this is the jejunum, and then to the ileum, to the cecum, and then ascending, hepatic, transverse, splenic flexure coming down, you're descending into your sigmoid, to your rectum, to your anus. You'll have to be able to label that. So looking here, we have um, your hepatic flexure, your superior mesenteric vein, mesenteric artery, transverse, colon. Here is your left kidney. I want you to know your right kidney. This is your aorta and your inferior vena cava. This is a CT with oral and IV. You can see the IV right here in the aorta and the contrast here in the transverse colon and the jejunum. Uh, and then we have the hepatic flexure there. This is a piece of the liver right there. So these kidneys are nice and bright, nice and bright. So splenic flexure, we have the jejunum. Here is your left kidney, right kidney. Um, this is your liver, so this is your hepatic flexure. MRI, this is down in the pelvis, so this is your sigmoid colon, and then we have your um, gluteus minimus, medius, and maximus. Here is your a uterus on a female, and you can see the sigmoid colon will cover the pelvis next week. So looking here at this diagram, it's your esophagus, here's your right crust, your left crust, um, your left gastric. So coming off, you have your inferior phrenic artery, and then you have your left gastric and your celiac, your uh, splenic artery, superior mesenteric artery, abdominal aorta coming down, and you have your inferior mesenteric artery where it bifurcates into your common ilium, uh, ilium iliac arteries, sorry, to your um, internal and external um, iliac arteries. So we'll cover that a little bit further too. Looking here, this is your descending um, abdominal aorta. And um, here's your splenic artery. Remember, it's got the curve in it. You have your right renal artery, and your right renal vein is bigger coming back. And you have your aorta, and then it, your common iliac arteries with your external and internal. So that other picture has a lot to it. You don't need to know all of that, okay? 
So I'm going to stop right there and we'll pick up again um, moving forward with the arteries and the veins.